The Minnesota Vikings have extended quarterback Kirk Cousins' contract and this, in a lot of ways, will shape what they do for the rest of the offseason. He was scheduled to make $45 million in 2022, which is obviously a very large number, but new GM Quezzi Adafo Mensa relieved that number to $31 million against the cap, which is much, much more affordable and worth it for what Cousins is as a football player. Like, love, or hate Kirk, we can all agree, he's not a top two or three quarterback, but he is a consistently good player, period. 68 passing touchdowns in the past two years, and the only player to throw for 25 or more touchdowns in every year since 2015 show that. Again, good, not necessarily elite or alien level. But this move, like whenever Mr. Cousins is discussed, was met with controversy and this, of course, was no different. And in today's video, we are going to be discussing why this was the correct move for Minnesota moving forward, so without further ado, let's begin. When looking at Kirk Cousins' resume as the starter of the Minnesota Vikings, you go back to 2018 when he signed a then-record three-year $84 million deal that was fully guaranteed. And with Kirk, money has always been a focal point of discussion. How much he makes, how much he gets guaranteed, and then usually followed with that is the record of the teams he's played quarterback for, followed then by people getting their jokes in, and the whole nine. But paying a quarterback $31 million to throw for 4,200 yards, 33 touchdowns, and seven interceptions is a good deal for the team shelling out the money. In terms of bang for their buck, this is the going rate. And you can't compare Joe Burrow or Justin Herbert's contract to whether it's Kirk's, Aaron Rodgers, Matt Stafford's, or whoever because they are on their rookie deals and will soon receive deals probably in the quarter billion dollar area. And what truly baffles me amongst the Vikings fan base is the division in how everyone feels about Kirk himself. You'd think with the way some Vikings fans talk about Kirk that they had Joe Montana in his prime and that this team had its glory days and won three or four Super Bowls in the previous six years before Kirk joined the squad and only has been downhill since. It's a bit of a messy situation, but there was a head coach who has been vocal even after after he was fired that he didn't want to sign Kirk for the money so it could be spent on his defense in Mike Zimmer, yet when Kirk would go out and win games, Zimmer choked away, might I add, all of a sudden the complaints would stop. And sure, I understand some fans' frustrations with Kirk and him not wanting to take a pay cut, although he eventually did, because I do understand where the average fan is coming from and essentially having the take of how much money is enough, Kirk. Like, you've already made over $200 million, does adding an extra 5 when that extra 5 or even 10 could help the team out a long ways and help you win a Lombardi? I fully understand that take and where those said people are coming from, because his teammates who don't make nearly the same money he does are taking pay cuts. But there's usually two sides of that. There's that side, and then there's the side of, oh my gosh, Kirk sucks, and he always chokes, and it's usually the Vikings fan that just hate Kirk because of how much he's paid and have really no other reason. It's a very divided fan base, and if you don't believe me, just go to twitter.com and search Kirk Cousins, and you'll see exactly what I mean. And those negative Nancys that hate Kirk Cousins just to hate him will absolutely never praise him. Like in a game where Kirk threw for four touchdowns, touchdowns and over 300 yards against the Packers this year, it was probably because Justin Jefferson had 180 of those yards, and Justin Jefferson probably threw the ball to himself, if you know where I'm coming from. And where I stand on this is that Kirk is the quarterback, and to build around him and truly assess the situation... Because most of the time, guys' success is based on what's around them. Of course, you're going to have the occasional Matt Stafford, the good or great player, depending on how you view him, on a truly bad team, and when he goes to a good team, you see what he can do and what he's capable of. But with Kirk and his time in Minnesota, he's never had an offensive line, and it has improved over time, but this was a team back in 2018 when Kirk arrived that had the third fewest rushing yards in the league, so it's not like Kirk could have handed the ball off at any time and said, hey Dalvin, go get me a 125 yard game and lead us to victory. In fact, it was the opposite. Oh, and by the way, this is a recurring theme, but Kirk has had a new offensive coordinator every single year since being in Minnesota. And in 2018, it was John D. Filippo, and he was fired before season's end. But Kirk and the money, right? 
And in 2019, everything clicked together and we saw a glimpse of what the Cousins era could be in Minnesota, and that was with one of his best weapons in Adam Thielen getting hurt halfway through the year. At that point, Kirk's number two receiver was rookie receiver Ola B.C. Johnson from Colorado, a seventh round pick. They went 10-6, and won a playoff game in New Orleans, and lost to the team that eventually went to the Super Bowl in the San Francisco 49ers, and I don't think there's any shame in that. That same 49ers team beat the Green Bay Packers a week later by the exact same margin, which was 17 points. Oh, and by the way, the Minnesota Vikings led in their game against the 49ers and were not down by 27 points at half. The same way Green Bay was only to make the score look better in what we call garbage time. Now, 2020 and a lot of 2021 was a nightmare from a coaching perspective because the Vikings would get leads, then either squander them or the defense would fail Kirk time and time again. And an example of this would be in 2020 when the Vikings started out 1-5 and, and the defensive guru's defense allowed less than 25 points just once and it was the game the Vikings won. They also had two one-point losses in that span and had those games gone Minnesota's way, you're looking at a team that makes back-to-back postseason appearances in 2019 and 2020 because the Bears made it with Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles, the MVP, Mitch was the MVP to be clear, and they would have made it over them. So having said all of this, I will never understand why there are some Vikings fans out there that would have rather paid Case Keenum 5 or 10 or even $15 million when he is clearly an inferior player to Kirk or possibly go another route. And believe it or not, there are some Vikings fans that legitimately think they should have drafted Lamar Jackson at 30th overall back in 2018, and that's obviously due in large part to one thing, hindsight. And with everything that's going on currently in the NFL, who's to say the Vikings can't make a run in the NFC with, for the first time in Kirk's tenure in Minnesota, he has an offensive-minded head coach that, and I emphasize, wants to work with him and believes in him and that he doesn't have to walk around that facility on eggshells because the tyrant in charge doesn't like him and acts like a toddler when he wouldn't get his way with a very much 1970s my way or the highway, I'm an authority position, listen to what I say attitude. That type of attitude Zim had works if you're winning, and when you're not winning then it's only a matter of time before the message gets stale and players have had enough. And that's exactly what happened in Minnesota near the end. Now you have a new regime and a new head coach who interacts with the players and very well at that, and there's already been some videos surfacing with Kevin O'Connell talking to some of the guys, and this is the type of leadership the team needed. Not Kirk sucks and we shouldn't have paid him and going to the press and all of that. What I think is most crazy about all of this is within the past two to three years, there's been some insanely bright spots from Kirk's standpoint that even in an offense that limit him, he's still shown at times. And with this, yes, there's equally as shit moments, but taking a look at the positives, the 20 point comeback against the Broncos in November of 2019 happened when the Vikings were desperate and they needed Kirk to step up and he did. The playoff game winning touchdown to Kyle Rudolph happened later that year as well. And in 2020, Kirk had a couple of game-winning drives, but that year was pretty whack all across the board and not just for the Vikings if we're being honest. In 2021 though, Kirk bailed the Vikings out when he needed them to and led either game-tying or winning drives in several games, and in a few games they lost because of things that were out of his control, like Greg Joseph missing a 37-yard game winner in Arizona, although I do love Greg, it was unfortunate he missed that. Like in Detroit, the defense playing prevent the whole way up the field for God knows what reason. Like the Ravens game when the team blew two double-digit leads on the road. Right there are three wins left off the board that takes the team from 8-9 and nine to 11-6 and six and makes the postseason. And I don't want to say they go into Tampa and beat Tom Brady, who is now back by the way, but I certainly think they give them a run for their money considering the circumstances. Or even if they would have played the Rams, they lost to them earlier by only 7 points. So all of these things considered, it is 100% the right decision to bring Kirk back. Sure, Kirk has his flaws, but what player doesn't. Do we fault Joe Burrow now for his game in week 2 back in Chicago where the Bengals lost to the Bears 
where Burrow threw three straight interceptions on three plays? Do we fault Patrick Mahomes for getting beat by three scores by the Bills on his home turf back in week five? Do we fault Josh Allen and the Bills for losing to the Jags in Jacksonville? Do we fault Tom Brady for getting shut out by the Saints on his home turf? Are all of these guys scrubs now? No, of course not. But we fault Kirk for his head coach routinely blowing double-digit leads that cost them at least a few games in 2021 and the former regime's job and another playoff appearance. Kirk is not the problem, and 2022 will more than show that. And that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, now is the time I ask you to please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, because it would truly mean the world. We recently hit 36,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for the support. And until next time, please be safe, and have a great day. Love you guys.